Do you consume caffeine out of choice? It would seem so. You are the one who selects it in the store or cafe, pays for it and puts it in your body. But are you really acting out of free will? What are your personal reasons for taking caffeine? Do you like the taste? Do you recall your first experience of the taste? It was probably a cup of coffee. Most people remember that they really didn't like the taste. The fact is that your brain has taught your body to cope with the foul taste so you can get the drug to which you have become addicted. Do you consume because of the smell? A rose may have a delightful smell, but that doesn't make us want to eat it. We love the smell of the ocean, but that doesn't make us want to drink it. When has the smell of a lovely perfume ever made you want to consume it? The fact is, you don't consume caffeine because of the smell. Concentration You might think it helps you to concentrate, but in reality, it does the complete opposite. Imagine you were to undertake a challenging mental task, let's say a difficult crossword puzzle. Now imagine how difficult it would be for you if a small child marched around the room kicking a tambourine and banging a drum. It would be almost impossible for you to concentrate. There is no doubt that were the boy to stop making a noise, you would immediately be able to concentrate better than a moment before. Yet, would you conclude that the boy and his actions were an aid to concentration? Of course not. Yet, that is exactly the kind of credit you give caffeine when you claim it helps you to concentrate. All you experience is the temporary ending of an aggravation caused by caffeine addiction. Energy The caffeine industry works hard and spends a fortune promoting the idea that caffeine gives us energy. From birth, we are surrounded by brainwashing, suggesting the same. We end up accepting it as fact without question. Look at young children at a party running around like there is no tomorrow. That's a completely natural energy high and a completely natural emotional high. Remember, this is before they are force-fed sugar-loaded jelly and ice cream. Even as an adult, your natural state should be to feel energized anyway. If you are not sick, you should have more than enough energy to enjoy whatever you want to do in life. If you are really tired, then your body is asking for sleep and rest, not caffeine. For the few occasions in life, when we need a little help to get through a late shift or to keep us going until the end of a long day, there are many natural, harmless, non-addictive and healthy stimulants to help temporarily carry us through. The fact is, if you get caffeine out of your life, you won't feel in need of any stimulants. You will be brimming with energy. Is caffeine sociable? It's you that's sociable, not caffeine. Caffeine doesn't chat, tell jokes or funny stories, listen to your problems or make people feel comfortable. Antioxidants People didn't even know what antioxidants were until 1954. Now people use them as an excuse for all kinds of indulgence. If it's antioxidants you were after, then you are better off eating grapes, strawberries, blueberries, apples or any other natural healthy nutritious food that contain them. Habit We don't do anything purely out of habit. Habit just describes the autopilot element of our behavior. Do you dress, brush your teeth or eat out of habit? No. However, as we have been performing these tasks every day throughout our lives, we have developed a routine around them. If for any reason we want to change that routine or habit, we can do so without any problem at all. 
we don't get into the habit of drinking coffee and then get addicted to caffeine. It's the other way around. We get addicted to caffeine and then get into the routine or habit of consuming it at regular intervals. So how does the addiction work? It can be frightening to admit that you are addicted to a drug. Even one as socially acceptable and prevalent as caffeine but thankfully the addiction is easy to break once you understand it. The little monster Caffeine is a physically addictive drug, which means that after you consume it, it creates physical withdrawal. This withdrawal takes the form of a mild, empty, slightly insecure, slightly uptight feeling. It's so mild, it's almost imperceptible. When you take another dose of the drug, that mild, empty, insecure feeling temporarily disappears, leaving you feeling normal again. In fact, you take each dose of caffeine merely to try to return to the feeling you had all the time before you have become addicted. It is like a little monster inside your body that feeds on caffeine. If you don't feed it, it complains. The Big Monster From birth, we are brainwashed into believing that we get some kind of benefit or crutch from caffeine that it helps us concentrate, increases our energy levels and productivity, that it helps us socialize and be more competitive in sport. The effect of the little monster seems to confirm this. Large corporations understand only too well the addictive nature of the drug and like sugar, they are adding it to as many of their products as they can often justified by the ludicrous assertion that it's just flavoring. Have you ever tasted pure caffeine? It's a bitter substance which tastes terrible. Look at the brainwashing in the product names. Monster, Relentless, Red Bull and Rockstar to name just a few. All aggressive, macho, sexy sounding brands targeting impressionable youngsters. Red Bull, for example, sponsors cool and fun events. Extreme sport seems to be its thing and its website looks more like a travel or sports website than one that promotes a synthetic, caffeinated drug drink. Red Bull doesn't just sponsor a Formula 1 racing team, it owns one. It bought a major league soccer team and renamed it the New York Red Bulls. It has pioneered a new model of advertising and marketing by conceiving, financing and producing extreme stunts like Felix Baumgartner's 24-mile free fall to earth from space. Its investment in sports is designed to promote an image of energy, daredevilry and heroism which becomes associated with its products. This is a deeply worrying strategy designed to appeal to youngsters at an impressionable age and get them hooked for life. Illusions Take a look at the two tables below, one square, one rectangular. Which table is longer? If I were to tell you that the dimensions of each table are exactly the same, you would be extremely skeptical, wouldn't you? You have already accepted that it's one square table and one rectangular because that is what I told you it is and it tallies with that you see. However, the fact is they are both identical. If you don't believe me, take a ruler and measure them. Extraordinary, isn't it? The reason I am showing you this illusion is because I want to demonstrate how our minds can easily be tricked into accepting as true something that is false. Your only frame of reference regarding caffeine is your addicted state of mind and body. So in that context, a shot of caffeine seems to deliver a boost. In reality, it's dragging you down mentally and physically. Cutting down Cutting down or trying to control an addiction doesn't work. 
It takes tremendous willpower and makes the drug appear more precious, just as dieting makes food appear more precious. Your final shot. When do you become free? It is important that you realize you will have achieved your goal the moment you finish your final shot. Whether that be a can of energy drink, a double espresso or a bucket size cup of black americano, the moment you finish it, you are free. Before you drink it, take time out to close your eyes and make a solemn vow, a commitment to yourself that it will be your last ever shot of caffeine. Concentrate on the foul taste and ponder how you were once conned into paying a fortune just to pour that filthy poison down your throat. Then get on with enjoying your life.